Then in part C, you need to calculate the market value of the loan for Crazy Stationers Limited. All right, so let's go back to the information provided about the loan. So they want to calculate their weighted average cost of capital, but in order to do this, they need the market value of the loan. Now, we know that the loan was obtained from their commercial bank three years ago for an original amount of 6 million rand. We know that the interest is deductible for tax purposes in terms of Section 24J. Remember, capital is never deductible, so only the interest portion is deductible. They don't understand how Section 24J works, so they need your assistance. And the loan is repayable in six equal annual installments comprising of 1,337,519 Rand. And that installment comprises of capital and interest. And you've been given the market-related pre-tax cost of a similar loan, which you'll remember we said is the cost of debt. All right. Now, guys, you'll note when you read through the information over here, Remember, what do I normally tell you when it comes to Section 24J? I give you two steps. And I tell you, in step one, we're going to calculate our cash flows, except we all calculate correctly. We're going to calculate our cash flows. And in step two, once we have the cash flows, we'll then calculate the market value. And you'll also remember I tell you to never just learn steps, but to actually make sure you understand the logic behind what you're doing. So why do we calculate the cash flows in step one? Because remember, guys, the market value is the present value of your future cash flows. So if you don't know what these cash flows are, you can't calculate the market value. So in step one, we calculate the cash flows. Once we have the cash flows, we present value all of those cash flows so that we can get the market value. Now, in this scenario... I've given you all of the cash flows. Up front, when they entered into the loan agreement, there would have been a cash inflow of a 6 million rand. And over the next, or over six years, because it's a six-year loan, the loan is going to be repaid in equal annual installments, and you'll have this cash outflow every year for a period of six years. And then the loan is repaid. So you have all of your cash flows. So you don't need to calculate the cash flows in step one. All right which is why I don't just want you to learn steps. I want you to understand why you're doing certain things, which means we can move on to step two and we can calculate the market value because we already have our cash flows. Now, remember, the market value is the present value of our future cash flows. So just be careful. They obtained this loan from the bank three years ago, and it is a six-year loan. So if they obtained the loan three years ago and it's a six-year loan, the future cash flows are going to be three years. The only three years remaining on the loan. In total, it's six years. Three years have already gone. There's three years left. So we are only looking at cash flows for the remaining three years. The six million rand over here is a past cash flow. Three years ago, when they entered into the loan agreements, they would have had an inflow of six million rand. It's not a future cash flow. It's a past cash flow. We don't include it in our calculation. So the only future cash flows we have is over the next three years, they're going to have a cash outflow of 1,337,519 Rand, and then the loan is repaid. Now, apart from that, in step two, we also always need to take tax into account, and that's where section 24J is going to come in over here. Because this installment over here comprises of interest and capital. So there's a capital portion and there's an interest portion. Now, only the interest portion is deductible. The capital portion is never deductible for tax purposes. Only the interest portion is deductible. And it's deductible in terms of Section 24J, which just means as the interest accrues over the period, they get the tax deduction. So they don't get the tax deduction when they actually pay the interest on the loan. They get the, ta the tax deduction as the interest accrues over the period. So I'll look at that in more detail when we actually get to the calculation. But for now, it's important for you to understand that this installment over here includes both capital and interest. But we need to know what the split is. We need to know what portion of that is capital and what portion is interest, because if we want to calculate the tax benefits of Section 24J, we need the interest portion, because only interest is tax deductible, not the capital portion. And you cannot do that. How are we going to determine what the interest portion is? 
You can't determine what the interest portion is because we don't have the interest rate on the loan. Or in other words, what I refer to as the coupon rate, the rate that we use to calculate the interest cash flows. I have not given you the coupon rate. I've given you the market-related rate, but the market-related rate is not the interest rate on this loan. The market-related rate is the cost of debt, which we use as our discount rate when we're calculating the market value. This is not the interest rate on this loan. So if we're trying to determine what portion of this installment is interest and what portion is capital, you can't use that 10%. That is not the interest rate on this loan. That is the market-related rate. We need the coupon rate, and I haven't given you the coupon rate, which means in step one, instead of calculating your cash flows, you are going to use the cash flows that I've provided, because you didn't need to calculate the cash flows, they've been given to you. Use the cash flows that have been provided to calculate the coupon rate. And it's not because you're memorizing steps. You don't even have to break this down into steps. You could have started with step two of the calculation and then seen, oh, I can't work out what the split is between this. I don't know what the split is of interest and capital. And I need to know what the split is. Otherwise, I can't do my tax calculation. And I can't do the split because I don't know what the interest rate is on the loan. So then you're going to have to go calculate the interest rate on the loan. Once you have the interest rate on the loan, you can split the installment between the interest and the capital portions. You can get your tax benefits and you can wrap up the calculation. All right, make sure you always understand what you're doing. Don't memorize steps. It's going to catch you if you memorize steps, guys. CTA is application-based. You need to understand what you are doing. So we've got the cash flows. In step one, we're going to calculate the coupon rate because we don't have the coupon rate. We don't know what the interest rate is on this loan. So that's going to be step one. And it's exactly the same as step one usually is, but instead we have all of the cash flows and we're going to be solving for I. Normally we put input I and we solve for either the payments or the future value. Now we don't have I, we're solving for I. So we've got the present value, we've got N, we've got the future value, we've got the annual payments amounts, and we're going to solve for I. What is the present value? When they entered into this loan agreement, or the loan was for an original amount of 6 million rand. So they would have had an inflow of 6 million rand when they first entered into this loan agreement. The period of the loan is six years. Remember, we only look at future cash flows when we get to step two and we're calculating market values because the market value is the present value of your future cash flows. But over here in step one, what's important to note is we look at the full loan term. And what's also important in step one is we always ignore tax and transaction costs. Okay. The future value is zero because we don't have a bullet payment or a balloon payment at the end of the period. The loan is repaid in equal annual installments of... And this is a negative amount. I'm actually just going to show it as a negative amount. These will be cash outflows every year of 1,337,519 rand. And you solve for I. It's going to give you 9%. So the interest rate on this loan is 9% and the market-related rate is 10%. Okay, the interest rate applicable to this loan, which we would use to calculate these cash flows, is 9%. And you can see, if you input 9 and you solve for the payment, if you don't input this payment over here, but instead you input I and you solve for the payment, you'll obviously get that payment amount. So you're just solving for something different, guys, but you're following the same logic. Now that we know what that coupon rate is, we can jump to step 2 of the calculation where we're going to calculate the market value. I've obviously just drawn up the table over here to save us a little bit of time. And it's important to note that the market value is the present value of your future cash flows. So you only include future cash flows in the calculation over here. It's a six-year loan. Three years have already passed. So there are only three years left. So include the annual installment each year.
Right. So those are all of your future cash flows, except we haven't taken tax into account because in step one, we ignored tax. Now in step two, we need to take tax into account. And obviously, if they're transaction costs, you would also take them into account. But the transaction costs would normally happen when they first enter into the loan agreement. So that happened three years ago. So three years ago, they would have had transaction costs when they entered into the loan agreement. So it wouldn't be taken into account over here because over here, we're only looking at future cash flows and not past cash flows. So we want the tax. We're looking at section 24J over here. And it's the tax benefits. And just always show your tax rate, guys. This is going to be a consequential mark, so you must show your tax rate. You were given the tax rate in the question, just in the additional information. Okay? So make sure you use that. All right. Now, what we're going to do over here is a separate calculation, because we are going to use our financial calculators, because we do not have time to draw up an amortization table. Okay, so we are using the amortization function on the financial calculator. You must always show your calculator steps. Don't just use your calculator and not show your calculations. You have to show what you are doing on your calculator so that you can be awarded these marks. All right, and we are not interested in periods one, two, and three because those are past cash flows. We are only looking at period four, period five, and period six. We need the interest in period four, five, and six, which is why we needed that coupon rate, the interest rate on the loan of 9%. Without that coupon rate, you can't get what the interest is each year. You won't be able to calculate the interest each year. Okay. So using your financial calculator, remember, keep all of this information in your financial calculator from step one. You've already got all of that information in your calculator. Keep it in your calculator. Use the amortization function on your calculator to pull out the interest in periods four, five, and six. Right. Then multiply that by 28% because the company is going to get a tax deduction for the interest. And if we want what the cash benefit is, it's going to be 28% of that amount because the tax rate is 28%. So multiply that by 28%. And then we can include this in our calculation above. Those are all of the future cash flows. We can total all of the future cash flows. Remember, you don't ever include anything in the first column over here. We are only looking at future cash flows. Okay, show your calculator steps. Go to input all of those cash flows into your financial calculator. What is the discount rate you are using? Remember, we use the market related rate or the rate on similar loans as the discount rate when calculating our market value. That is the cost of debt. That's the discount rate that we use when calculating the market value. Just be careful, that's the pre tax rate. It's safe to assume that's always pre-tax unless you're told otherwise. So if we want the after-tax rate, we just need to multiply that by 72% because the tax rate is 28%. So that gives us 7.2%. So your cash flows over here are after-tax. You've taken tax into account. 
And the discount rate over here is also after tax. Everything is after tax because we are dealing with debt and interest is tax deductible. And then you can solve for your net present cost, your net present value, whatever you want to call it. But that's going to be your market value. All right, and that then answers part C of the required.